Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. Uh, a marketing week that feels like six. Um, we're going to really break down what's going on in this market trade. Way too much red on the screen. Uh, we're going to talk about what is it like for that smaller producer who might not have the lines of communication that they need. We're going to talk about what they need to learn to be able to make themselves more profitable. Really is going to help in this point. Uh, packer margins, uh, are they more profitable than they were just a few days ago? Is cash going to be near record high? Or are we going to see a big drop this week? Let's just let Brad do all the talking. We'll find out what's going on in today's and this whole week's market trade. And Brad, I tell you, I should mention you are with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. What's going on? I mean, we're looking at some trade that just continues to drop lower and lower. I mean, we could do the whole comparison with going on in this hog market compared to cattle. I mean, it's it's not a pretty picture at the moment. So many things we could talk about. But you asked me about a hundred questions there and uh, like- uh, I figured I'll just sit back. I should be taking notes, yeah. Um, Thanks for having me on. First of all, I enjoy doing this program a lot. Um, even on days where it doesn't always make sense, Susan. I mean, any analyst that sits there and you know is going to pretend, and I suppose we are guilty, and I'm as guilty as anybody. You want to come off as somebody that has some information that 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 you're not going to hear from anybody else. So you want to, you know. So I apologize, but there are plenty of days. If I've ever given someone the impression that I know why and what's happening. There are plenty of days where I, I scratch my head and go, well, I didn't see that one coming. And that would be a good description of yesterday. So let's rewind to that a little bit, I because I, I think that's where it started. Um, I think I've mentioned on your program a number of times that I believe that there are algorithms that are programmed to react to certain phrases or words or things like that in the headlines. We saw that a few weeks ago when we had that uh, minor and, and, and insignificant fire at a packing plant that it turned out, but the market broke on that headline news until we could figure out that it wasn't significant. It actually wasn't even inside the, the particular plant and, and, and the market regroup. What I'm referring to is yesterday at 11 o'clock when the box beef prices print come out and it was down $4.86, I believe. In one minute, I could show you the one minute chart if I had tech, if I was better at technology, but we broke like over $3 and it just went whoosh. And, and uh, you know, is that coincidence? Maybe. I doubt it. But uh, I, I just lay that out there. So what happens there that destroys kind of the whole structure of the market. You, you run through a, a lot of buy orders. Now you're into some sell orders, some stop orders. You've created a, a, a uncertainty on the part of the, uh, you know, the trader. Think about it. So if I'm a cattle feeder, which I am, I, I walk in every day. I'm a potential seller. And so is every other cattle feeder that's not hedged. And most of them aren't 100% hedged. Who's kidding? Who? So. You get into, oh no, what's a super high price? We better react, you know. I mean, and 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 so that happens. Now, we ended up stopping, Susan. Now we could talk about the difference between fundamentals and technicals. We could do that until three thirty in the afternoon. Um, I still believe at the end of the day that the fundamentals make a difference. Uh, but in the short short term and in the here and now, Susan, these funds are powerful. Uh, and when they talk about money flow and people having to get in and out and whatever else. Um, Okay, let's cut to the chase. I thought we held yesterday at an important spot on the August cattle. It was right dead on the 40-day moving average. Susan, that's the same spot that it held the last three setbacks. So that the more the more the more you can tell that the market's uh, paying attention to it. And I look at that as a spot where that's where if we take it out, you'll probably get some fun selling. There's also a 38% retracement very near that area, and there's also a gap there uh, at 180.30. So circle that spot on your chart folks 180 30 to 180 50 in that window let's hope we stay above it i guess i believe that the fundamental story is strong enough uh I, my brother just texted me that he 198 is available up here in northwest iowa that'll be two dollars lower but is that such a bad thing compared to the four or five dollar sell off the futures have i think not i think that that actually is a little bit supportive so um it was tough yesterday watching that thing do that. And then and then we had some cash deterioration, I think, on maybe some panic. I don't know. Uninformed. Um, disappointing selling on some cash cattle. Yet late yesterday, I thought, probably didn't help our tone this morning either. But we're only 15 cents lower right now as I'm visiting it with you as we near the close. So, so do you think, is there a chance um, that some just say cash is too high at this point? I mean, I don't think it's ever too high, but... Um, is it that's good because otherwise I thought we were going to cut this one short. I mean, like, <laughs> that, that would but be is an that, is that part of the problem. Well, we're at, I, I think I know what you're trying to ask. We're at a, it's like 
four dollar corn doesn't break as fast as seven dollar corn right i mean i mean there is relative highs and lows and, and obviously we're not just relatively high we are very high on the cattle of course now we i would think that it's very fundamentally justified because of tight supply right but um certainly you're gonna you know i mean the old days where that you'd get a 10 percent drop from from winter high to summer low right eight to ten percent well that was when 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 cattle were worth a dollar fifteen you know, now compared to or 200, obviously a 10% break is a whole lot more. I mean, some of it just kind of is natural thinking. So certainly uh, you're, you're going to get more volatility from those high levels like that for sure. Now, um, you know, people, some people think I, 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 I'm too much about this adversarial type relationship that the producer has with a packer. And maybe that's a strong term, but I mean, really, they're going to try to buy them as cheap as they can. Right. And more, I'm going to try to sell them as high as I can. Uh, so it's about leverage, you know? So as long as you're current and we are, that's why I really don't think that this is one of those sweep the leg, whatever in karate kid move is, you know, I, uh, I think it's a correction. Um, and, and maybe it won't even last very long, but again, I'll caution you in 2014, I got that chart memorized. We broke $15 in two weeks in the month of August. And then we still ended up rallying another $25, $30. So you can get those kind of moves, uh, especially when a market is a little bit higher priced like this. I was encouraged that the forward spreads work fine today and that they didn't just, you know, they didn't hang us from a bloody hook here today. And I, and I thought that there was a chance that maybe something like that could happen. Yeah. So is the South as current as the North? Yeah, I would say based on average weights and stuff like that, that they're decent, but not as current as us. And um, it's significant in saying that. And that's a good question because um, yeah, you've heard me say it. I believe that the North is the difference maker typically in supply. And it's usually on a negative field uh, because if we're <clears throat> right or wrong, <clears throat> and I'm a farmer feeder myself and I love them. And that's why I like cattle because I like cattle people. But we would sometimes be the problem when we are fighting a market, all right? And we don't like the price. And so we're going to feed another, we'll just make them bigger, right? And we lose our currentness and we lose our leverage. And because we are the only people that negotiate cattle, well, not the only, but we do the vast majority of a negotiation of our cattle. We're the one that gets exposed the most in those scenarios. So um, I, I don't think it's a supply problem. Uh, and the next thing that you'll ask me probably is demand. Um, is demand going to stay perfect in the third week of July? No, it's not going to be as good as it was on Mother's Day. It never is, you know. So you're going to break a little bit here probably. But my, again, I, I don't think that the, the summertime blues are as bad as they were before COVID because we all learned, well, you and I know how to do it. But the Gen X's or whatever, they YouTube to how to cook a steak and figured out this is a pretty good deal when they couldn't go to their favorite restaurant. And we can do this two or three times a week for the same cost. So that, that was what I thought the last two summers kept that, kept that, you know, that, 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 that net a little closer to the, the high wire. So I think, I don't, you know, it's volatile, but I think we're okay. All right. Well, I wanted to, um, I know we, we could talk forever on what's going on in these cattle markets, but I want to spend the last few minutes before we wrapped up today's program, because there is a big event coming up this weekend in your hometown. And uh, the Thunder in the Valley is a, is a huge polling event that folks have known about for the last 20 years. And because of some amazing volunteers, year 21 will happen, but it's got a new little spin on it for this year to help raise some funds. Yeah, it's nice of you to bring that up. Yeah, our community was devastated. I live, even though I've drove to Sioux Center for 44 years, it's 15 and a half miles from the, where I live on the edge of town. I live on a farm. Um, our town was devastated by a flood that uh, it's hard to even describe it. Um, so there was some questioning about what should we even be having an event like this, a tractor pull. Like it's a big deal. I mean, it's like the Super Bowl for tractor pullers around here. It's a huge event. Um, uh, and yet I think that the, ultimately the decision was made that we needed something and maybe this would provide some um, energy for a fundraising tech project. By the way, I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to plug uh, 5013C Friends of Rock Valley. I am engaged and involved with that committee. Um, that is going to be strictly locally intended to help those that need that help the most. Um, and it's a big, big need. So, you know, I've had people say, is there something I can do? I'll give you the telephone number. You can call me. I'll tell you who to get a hold of. The two banks that are that are in charge of that 
501 3C. Uh, that is a tax deductible, deductible donation to go to those people that people that lost their houses and businesses and things like that. So uh, it'll be a big event, um, free to the public, asking for a donation. And instead of uh, instead of having to pay to get in, how about we help uh, some of our neighbors? Uh, is is the goal? And I, I think it'll be I think it'll be pretty cool. We're supposed to have nice weather. It's a great show anyway. All right. Well, thanks so much, Brad. What's the best way for folks to get a hold of you? Okay, here's the number, 712-722-0023 or marketstuffkkvtrading.com. All right, use that number, use KKV Trading, more information. We wish you guys the best of luck this weekend as, as you continue. Hearts go out to all those affected in, in, in Rock Valley. And thanks for uh, giving us a market update as well. Well, and one quick thing, the, the thanks, these first responders, and I know you're yeah. one too, but they were unreal what they, the courage uh, and risking their own life. And in many cases when their own houses are upside down and full of water, um, words do not express the thanks that the community has for those people. Very well put. That's been this week's Cattle Call. Quick reminder, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. Keeping everybody in Iowa in our thoughts and prayers. We'll be back next week with another edition of Cattle Call.